What's good with YouTube? It's your man Cosplay Ray, and we are back for another episode of We Are Epic Cosplay. On this video, we are picking up part two of the Batman mech suit grapple gun that I wanted to make. Now, this particular grapple gun is the one that he uses in the fight scene with Superman, and you only see it like the the one time, you know, for this like that one fight scene. Mostly in all the other movies, he uses the uh, grapple gun that has like the wood handle. But I wanted to make the grapple gun that went with my cosplay. So right here, I basically am getting all the like the PVC pipes and the wood together. Uh, I am actually in the process of gluing two halves of a block that I cut out, like the inner circle for. And that's going to be the front part of the muzzle of the gun. So I am using Zappa Gap, or, which is a really good uh, glue. I think that it's pretty much the only like super glue that I use in my cosplays now. And basically just doing a fit test fit. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to it. It, it, it was a little. On, it wasn't the size that I actually needed it, so I decided later on that I was going to add a piece of, I think, a quarter inch craft foam to the front of it to, to make it a little, a little bigger or a little longer in the front of the gun. But right here, I am just taking some masking tape and I am wrapping it around the base of the pipe because the, the fit wasn't as tight as I, I needed it, so I just that's a real easy way to snug up like a f when you're trying to get something to get a, a little tighter of a fit on pieces that you're putting together it's a real easy way just to get a nice snug fit is just by adding some like masking tape or something like that and over here I'm just kind of pretty much cutting away the excess because there was like too much that was actually showing of the tape and you don't want the, sh the tape to show so you basically want to trim down just in the area that you need to snug up the fit so I'm actually over here cutting more tape um, it's a lot thinner still wasn't tight enough so we're adding a little bit more tape I think this should be enough tape at this point okay it seems like I'm having to force it down into the onto the pipe so that means that's a pretty good fit so I know it doesn't look like much now but wait till the end of the videos and it's a completely different look altogether so as you can see right here uh, I think the, the the muzzle is a little too it's, it's not thick enough for me um, it was wide enough but it wasn't thick enough so I end up basically like I said I end up basically going back and adding a piece of foam to the front of it plus it helps to make it a little a little bit more con friendly because you know it's a little softer of a material okay here I am doing kind of a dry test fit of where all these little pieces are gonna go so there will be the handle and the part of the wood that connects from the handle to the PVC body of the gun and then there's a piece of wood that goes directly underneath the handle area. So, yeah, so it took me a little, it took me a while to kind of figure out exactly how everything was gonna go together. So I'm literally just staring at at the, the piece, trying to figure out, okay, is this is it straight? Because obviously you do not want to glue. Uh, your piece until you know that it's it's straight because you don't want to have a crooked piece because that would just kind of defeat the whole purpose 
So here I am using the zapping app to glue the muzzle into the body of the PVC part. And then I have to basically find the right positioning to put the bottom piece and then the top piece onto that PVC. And like I said, that top piece will actually bridge over and connect to the handle. Kind of, it's kind of like a free floating handle. So I think this might be my first attempt to glue this on. Uh, if it's, no, it's actually the bottom. So I think the bottom glued into place rather easily. Uh, it was the top part that I had to do a little bit of sanding and kind of get a nice con like a concord curve. I don't even know if that's the right word for it, but I had to basically match the shape of the PVC pipe with the piece of the wood that was going to connect onto the pipe. So I had to get the same type of shape on the wood so the two pieces would fit flush. So it was kind of like an inward kind of curve going on. And this is always the fun part, the gluing. Okay, so basically that was me walking all away because I needed to uh, cut down the, some material and do some sanding to get that nice inward curve. So I think this time around, this, this piece should be nice and flush with the PVC pipe. Now the only thing I would have liked to have done differently was if I could have got like a, some kind of connector where I could have put screws to attach that piece of wood to the PVC pipe, that would have been great. But the, the Zappa Gap did work rather well. So, and on top of it, I will end up putting some Wonderflex to connect from that piece that I'm gluing on right now to the PVC pipe body. And that will help to reinforce the handle. So as you can see, I'm still gluing the pieces together. And this is, okay, so this was the time where it didn't, lay flush and I had to do a little bit more sanding to get it to come back so now it's glued and we're all set to go so I decided to opt out from the PVC pipe handle that I was gonna use and decided to go with a wooden dowel because I'm able to literally drill a hole in the top of the wood connector to the handle and add a nice screw into the wood handle so there was definitely going to be a, a, a lot better of um, a hold from the handle to the part that connects to the, to the main body. It was a lot better idea than using the PVC pipe because uh, I don't know how I would have really like secured the handle onto that piece that I'm drilling in right now. So the wood is definitely a much better way to go because it, it just gives you a more solid piece to attach these two parts together so make sure you do a pre-drill before you try to put like any type of screw in there i think a wood screw might work um but i was i ended up using like a more of a metal screw it was a lot longer, so I knew that that screw was going to go deeper into the handle, which would give me a stronger hold. But always make sure that you pre-drill your holes first, because you don't want to split your wood in half. I've done that before on, on certain projects where I just tried to put the screw and just drill the screw right into the, the material, and it basically will just split the material in two, and then you got to scrap it and start all over. You don't want to do that. So as you can see, nice firm connection to that piece. Now I get to put the front part with the body, the main body, and it's starting to look like something. It's actually starting to look like the grapple gun, slightly. 
we still got a lot of work to do. But, you know, step by step, gets cl you closer to your goal. So the good thing was that the front part of the gun uh, was b detachable from the main body. So I was able to, you know, take the front part off, work on what I needed to, and then put it back together. So right now it's starting to uh, take some, some shape and we're gonna be working on the grip. Now I'm using the six millimeter craft foam which is pretty much like a quarter inch thick and I'm using it to make the base there's like a, a base that goes right underneath at the top of the handle right underneath the connecting point that connects the handle to the main part of the body it was a, a beveled angle so it, it beveled outward so I basically made a square and kind of cut uh, which you'll see in a minute. I kind of use the my exacto knife to cut using the ruler cut an angle outward. So you want to tilt your blade pretty much inward and cut on a 45 degree angle outward, which will give you this nice beveled shape and it was like a pretty much it was a square that I had the nice beveled angles on all four pieces and then you will see that I will cut out the circle in the middle of that foam and slide that piece over the handle. Kind of got ahead of myself real quick, but this is the process of me actually cutting the bevel. Now, if you've never used an X-Acto knife to cut a bevel before, you just want to be careful on making sure that your ruler you make i would go with a, a metal ruler i tried using my plastic roller ruler and i actually kind of like carved out some of the plastic on the ruler which you don't really want to do so i kind of recommend using like a, a metal ruler that way you could be more confident in your angled bevel cut And there you go, there's the piece. And of course I'm gonna do a little bit of dremeling to sand down some of those uneven edges. And if you do not have a dremel, you, and you are a crafter, you should really get a dremel. It's a rotary tool and it is comes in so handy for so many different things. I use my dremel to sand, I use my dremel to uh, router it actually has like a router bit that you could use to i mean it got engraving bits all types of stuff so make sure you if you're a crafter you definitely want to make sure you have yourself a dremel okay i'm just trimming off some of the edges i don't i don't want an exact sharp point on on those bevels so i kind of like trimmed off a little bit with the scissors So there we go, doing a little bit more sanding. You know me, I, I, I like to make sure everything's as even as it can be. And now it's time to cut out the circle on the inside. It didn't need to be that precise of a, a, a cut because it's basically going to go and get slid over the handle. So it doesn't really, didn't need to be perfect. You know, it's cosplay. Nothing needs to really be perfect. You know, you can get it as close as you want, but nothing needs to be perfect. And you want to make sure you don't cut yourself. That's always a plus. So as you can see, I actually had pressed the handle down onto the foam and then drew the indent 
that it left behind, the impression that it left behind. So I knew exactly the diameter of the handle to cut the hole out. Also, be very careful when you are using a Dremel because once you, because the way it spins, when you get to the end of, like, say, a piece that you're trying to sand, there is a possibility that a kid, it's going to want to whip. It's literally going to want to run right over that the edge and go underneath it. So there are times where if you're trying to sand something and you get to the edge, be very careful. Because if you don't, it, it'll take the your, your material and whip it across the room and it possibly could damage it. So like I suggest when you get near the end, kind of like turn it around and go from the other direction. Just a tip. Okay, so I am just cleaning up some of the foam off the bottom of the piece because you know, I don't want that showing on the bottom and kind of just lining it up because once again you want to make sure that all pieces are kind of running in the same direction because you don't want to have one facing south and then one facing like north or east or something like that so and this was a really inexpensive build believe it or not um, I think the most expensive part of this build was buying the like compressed wood that I used for the part that connects from the handle to the main body and they didn't have a small piece so I had to buy a pretty large piece so I have a, a good amount of material left over extra so I think I'm gonna make myself a Batman shelf yeah definitely Batman shelf Okay, right now I am just sanding off the part that will connect the floater part of the handle, which is the top part that connects to the main body, with the main part of the handle. So in the next video, I will actually be putting two pieces on the side of each part of that handle. So you, madam, you definitely want to make sure that you check out the next video because it's now starting to take shape and we're going to get into the really good parts, like the details. So the main part of the body is pretty much like done at this point and now it's all detail work from here on out. So you definitely do not want to miss out on that. So to end this video, like I end all my videos, remember, hashtag I cosplay my way. And you can too. And you should too. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell if you like what I'm playing. Peace.